Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. So guys, the crypto market is rallying today. Uh, you know, although we did see a dump for XRP after a few days of pumping uh, significantly, uh, XRP is down by 45% only on the 24 hour. Uh, on the seven days, it's up by uh, over 45%, 46.7. And look at the rest of the crypto market. The rest of the crypto market is uh, rallying more or less. This all adding fuel to the crypto fire uh, for companies like Coinbase. Coinbase picks NASDAQ for direct listing. So uh, they uh, want to be listed on the NASDAQ. After months of speculation, San Francisco-based crypto exchange Coinbase recently announced plans to go public via a direct listing. Now, the block reports that the company will list its shares on the NASDAQ. Uh, Coinbase quietly filed a draft uh, of its registration with the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission back in December, and the direct listing was officially announced last week. Unlike an IPO, a direct listing doesn't involve creating new shares. Uh, the block also reported that Coinbase has launched a secondary market for private shares with NASDAQ's private market service which has already implied a valuation of around $50 billion. And so please note, Coinbase has grown into one of the most dominant crypto companies in the world. It's already raised over $500 million from investors like Anderson Horowitz and Polychain. So uh, these guys launching an IPO, I think this is going to have an even more positive effect on the crypto market because once we start to see uh, uh, companies go public, of course, uh, especially big ones like Coinbase, you know, one of the biggest exchanges, I think the biggest exchange in the United States, there might be an initial buzz around the IPO. I'm not going to speculate on what the price will be or anything like that. But um, this is going to, again, have an overall effect on the rest of crypto. And uh, we already know there's buzz around Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And, uh, you know, the top five, the top 10, let's say, really tend to get the lion's share of the crypto buzz. Because, uh, you know, when people just go to Google and look up cryptocurrency list, uh, chances are nine times out of 10, they will likely click on something like coin market cap. And when you see these, these are automatically default listed by market cap. And XRP, for example, uh, is in the top five, at least as of now. But even the top 10 cryptocurrencies, people will likely uh, be interested in investing in those currencies. So the money, the new money that's going to come in uh, because of this kind of buzz will likely go in to the top five or 10 cryptocurrencies, which is great for XRP holders, for example, but ultimately great for the rest of the crypto market. Uh, uh, so wondering when this is going to come out, probably later in 2021. I saw this from Bank XRP here on Twitter. Uh, Signum Bank and Fine Wine Capital issued their first tokenized asset under the new Swiss DLT law. So they have successfully tokenized a range of premium investable wines, creating the first asset tokens uh, issued under the new Swiss DLT law, uh, whose first provisions came into effect today. Assets tokenized on Signum's designate platform are issued under the incoming legal framework uh, and will be fully recognized under a new category of ledger-based securities. The new legal provisions pave the way for the next generation of securities on the blockchain and provide a robust legal foundation to realize the potential of asset tokenization. Signum has developed a framework to effectively implement its tokenization solutions under these new provisions. Fine Wine marks Signum's first asset token offering in the art and collectibles vertical, which is available to Signum clients from today. So this is interesting because these guys are Ripple Net integrated. And so, uh, you know, we've talked about Ripple doing cross-border payments, but these other verticals are really what's going to add more value to the XRPL. And now we're starting to see Signum Bank utilize DLT and the, the new law that was passed in Switzerland uh, to really optimize, to really capitalize on this. So just to give you guys some context, and basically what I found was, uh, you know, the news when XRP was originally added to Signum Bank, that was a big, uh, that was a big piece of news last year. But these guys are also a partner of Ripple and integrated with RippleNet. And this new DLT law uh, coming into Switzerland uh, is going to allow, I guess, more of this to happen. So uh, we're seeing it now with Fine Wine Capital. Great news here coming out of Switzerland. Got to thank Bank XRP for posting that. And more news here, guys, for the Flare Network. Uh, Flare integrates NFT gaming startup Gala while its first DeFi announces public beta. So Flare Networks, a soon-to-be-released Ethereum-compatible programmatic blockchain, has announced its first real-world integration. It will host non-fungible tokens by Gala's Games uh, natively to advance the decentralized gaming experience. According to the official announcement by the Flare team, it has partnered with Gala Games, a decentralized gaming startup by Eric uh, Schermeyer, the co-founder of Zygna. Uh, Flare will be a platform for minting and transferring the in-game assets of Gala's products. So again, uh, this is going to be happening on the XRPL, Flare Networks, Gala Games, more utilization, more use cases, just another use case of the XRPL. So the key point of the new integration is the decentralized character of Flare-based NFT.
NFT mechanisms. Uh, only gamers will be able to control these assets and buy and sell them, as well as use them as collateral for loans. In the gaming industry, I was surprised when I heard these numbers. The gaming industry is huge. Bigger than Hollywood, that's right. In 2017, the US game industry as a whole was worth $18.4 billion and consisted of roughly 2,457 companies that had a rough total of two of sorry 220,000 people employed. US video game revenue is forecast to reach 230 billion by the year 2022, making it the largest video game market in the world. So uh, also the US video game industry, the biggest in the world, something to note. And if we start seeing this in Gala Games, for example, just one example, uh, who's to say that more gaming companies won't jump on board? What do they say, a $230 billion industry by 2022? That's just around the corner, guys. I also saw this uh, from Valente Technologies. Now, we heard about this the other day, uh, but they just put out a, a recent statement yesterday. Valente Technologies, the global leader in cloud payments and financial messaging today, announced their participation in a pilot program for the Federal Reserve's upcoming instant payment offerings, the Fed now service. So this is for cross-border payments, guys, in the U.S. The offering highlights the industry's uh, charge to provide American customers and businesses with instant payment services that deliver control, convenience, and certainty. Uh, in the U.S., Valente is known as the enabler of the first real-time payments over the Clearinghouse RTP network and is a member of the U.S. Faster Payments Council. So I don't know why uh, they are uh, re-releasing this because I do believe we heard about this last week. Uh, nevertheless, this is a brand new statement here uh, just from yesterday. The company has also been a driving force Force and payments modernization internationally, helping banks of all sizes uh, process instant payments in Europe, SEPA instant payments throughout TIPS and RT1, Mexico, SPEI, Saudi Arabia, and many other countries. Uh, Valente's cloud native and uh, API first solutions are also an ideal fit for the demands of ISO 20022 based instant payments networks like FedNow. So, this is going to be the new standard. Of course, uh, we've heard in the past RippleNet, uh, the first cryptocurrency, or rather the first blockchain DLT company. Uh, to deal with payments, to get on to that new standard. And uh, now we're seeing other companies like Valente, who is a Ripple-enabled partner, do the same thing. Also, this was big news, Valente teaming up uh, to do this trial with FedNow, which is going to be the system in the United States for this. So big news here, great news for Ripple partner Valente, and ultimately uh, RippleNet utilization. And guys, I did a video this morning, I'll link it up here if you guys didn't catch it, uh, with regards to uh, today, the aftermath of uh, what happened with XRP after the pump date, February 1st, it was a bit of a bust. But you know, there was some news that Gene Simmons uh, invested in Dogecoin and XRP. And you're thinking to yourself, okay, you know, these are just two coins that pumped recently. Is he just jumping on the bandwagon? Well, apparently not. And uh, I got a text from Dustin this morning uh, from Life's Tough Media. If you guys aren't following him, uh, here's his Twitter. I'll leave it down in the description. I suggest you give him a follow. He has actually uh, interviewed Gene Simmons. Uh, and if you scroll down here, you can see the interview snapshot here with Gene Simmons. There's Dustin in the corner. And uh, Dustin has let me know that Gene is very keen on Ripple and XRP. I will let you know more details as they come out. Uh, he hasn't even told me all the details yet, but it sounds like it's going to be a very, very interesting interview. So yeah, guys, life's tough media. If you're not uh, following Dustin here on Twitter, uh, please do. He's a really great guy, a podcaster, uh, and does a lot of great interviews with uh, people, very influential people in the cryptocurrency space. I know some of you guys might be new to the space, right? So it's good to get like, you know, up to speed on what's going on very, very fast because, you know, if it was 2018, maybe it wouldn't be so pressing, but right now, you know, we are in the midst of a bull run and not being educated now brings me back to where I was in 2017. Okay, I got into the crypto space, bought my first bag of XRP uh, in and around here. It wasn't the first crypto I bought, but I bought XRP in and around here, saw the price rally, and then, you know, basically a bear market for two and a half years, give or take. But this was the time where I got educated. I started the channel in mid-2018, uh, really did my research, and, uh, you know, got a lot more information about what's going on in the space, why certain cryptocurrencies will thrive and others will not. And so, uh, you know, to be educated is power. Knowledge is power, as they say. Uh, and this from Andrews L, the angriest people on crypto Twitter are usually the least informed. And that's not, no, that's not shots fired. That's just truth. If you don't have the knowledge on what you're doing, you are obviously going to lash out, especially if you are maybe younger, maybe a little more immature. You just lost your paycheck because you put it into a cryptocurrency and poof, it's gone now. These are the kinds of things that, you know, with education and I try to, you know, tell people what I'm doing on this channel, give you guys, uh, you 
know, case scenarios and uh, where price could go. I give you guys all the latest news on Ripple and XRP and some other cryptocurrencies. What's happening with Bitcoin? Because Bitcoin is the pulse of the market. And so, you know, by taking all this in, you really kind of get a bigger picture of where the crypto market could go, why things happen the way they do. And one of the big misconceptions is with Ripple, uh, when they say Ripple has dumped another 1 billion XRP every single month, uh, is that escrow. People keep thinking Ripple is dumping on the small investors. The price will never go up if XRP keeps being dumped. Well, we know that isn't true because we, we did experience two pumps here. We experienced one uh, in November right up here. And then the SEC lawsuit came out, XRP price dumped again, and then we experienced experienced another pump leading up into February 1st. And at the beginning of each month, of course, uh, Ripple releases 1 billion XRP from escrow. And I got to bring this up from Leonidas. Every month, Ripple released $1 billion from its escrow, uh, two times 500 million. Uh, those are the transactions. Ripple re-escrowed 900 million XRP into new escrows. In total, Ripple has so far re-escrowed 31 out of the 38 billion XRP released. And so some people don't know that, right? Some people just think, oh, that XRP is out in the ecosystem and it's just there uh, for the taking and demand will never uh, go up because there's too much XRP in the ecosystem. Guys, I will link Leonidas's uh, entire description of what's going on here in the description of this video because he really does outline this very, very clearly. Uh, I just wanted to go down here. I'm not going to go over it. Uh, I do suggest you go check out this link. I wanted to just show you guys this though. XRP sales. Ripple has been very transparent as far as its sales are concerned. Every quarter it publishes a quarterly report that shows exactly how much XRP Ripple sold during that time frame. As you can see in the graph below, Ripple sales in USD were the most from quarter 3, 2018 to quarter 2, 2019. And guys, uh, Ripple went on the record saying programmatic sales of XRP uh, did peter off from this point onward. And you guys can actually see that in the chart here. Uh, towards the end of quarter 2, 2019, Ripple announced that it would start using a different approach to XRP volume, reporting that it would uh, take a more conservative approach to XRP sales. Indeed, in the last five quarters, Ripple sales appear to be significantly lower. So the conclusion, wherever you see a news outlet claiming that Ripple is about to dump 1 billion XRP, you should know that this is never the case. Ripple has maintained a very conservative approach with maximum transparency. As mentioned in a quarter four 2019 report, Ripple continues to focus solely on its over-the-counter sales with a few strategic partners who are building XRP utility and liquidity in strategic regions, including the EMEA and Asia. Ripple is determined to get more RippleNet members on on-demand liquidity and XRP, and it is taking all the necessary steps to achieve that. So Ripple continuing to work hard, continuing to build the ecosystem. Price will go up despite the fact that XRP is being released into the ecosystem via the escrow and new traders, new investors who are perhaps eyeing XRP for the first time. This is part of this educational process that I was talking about. Uh, this is something that you guys should understand. We talk about Jed sales. We talk about XRP and escrow. Guys, none of this has a bearing on the open market. Over-the-counter sales are very, very different uh, from regular retail market sales. So something to keep in mind. Supply and demand is what brought the price up a couple of days ago. Uh, and we're still seeing XRP rally despite this big dump. Here it is again on the hourly. We are still formulating that inverse head and shoulders. So where are we going to go next, guys? Got to keep an eye on this to find out, but tell me down in the comments what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.